Britain has had many great rulers, some so-so rulers, and a good number of downright awful ones. But who is the unfairest of them all? Let's find out. Did you ever have one of those days when you didn't really feel like doing much of anything? Maybe you eat a big meal, hang out with your friends, spend some money, and just put off that big pile of work that's building up. Well, that's basically what George IV did every single day he was king. Although he performed admirably as regent while his father George III suffered from mental illness, as soon as he became king in 1820, he started to think, why am I working so hard? Other than sleeping around a lot, spending money that Britain didn't have and becoming morbidly obese, George IV didn't accomplish much of anything during his rule. When he died in 1830, newspapers openly celebrated his death. George IV was hated by his subjects, but at least they didn't kill him. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for Charles I. He was one of those guys that had trouble getting along with people. He dissolved Parliament three times, once for 11 years, saying, That's it! I'm tired of tripping over you losers when I'm trying to get things done around here. He started taking more money from people and insulting everybody's religion. Eventually, this led to two civil wars, both of which he lost. At the end of the Second War, they decided to remove Charles's crown, along with the rest of his head. At the time of his death, he was considered such a bad ruler that Britain decided to get rid of the monarchy altogether and let ultra-Puritan Oliver Cromwell take over. Spoiler alert, that didn't go too well either. Taking Charlie's head was slightly unfair because they did ask him to be king. It's not like he took the throne from the rightful heir, which is what our next ruler did. King Stephen usurped the throne in 1135, which rightfully belonged to his cousin Matilda, because he didn't like the idea of a girl ruling England. To appease everybody, he then gave away a bunch of money, power, and titles to people who still kind of ended up thinking he was pretty lame. His cousin Matilda, along with the help of her half-brother, challenged him, and the country was thrown into a civil war which ran hot and cold until 1153. That's when King Stephen made the best decision of his entire rule, to give up. He allowed Matilda's son Henry to succeed him, the civil war ended, and he died a year later. Next up is Edward II. You may remember him as the Prince from Braveheart. He lost a war with Scotland, turned all of his barons against him by repeatedly dispensing favours to certain young men in his court to whom he showed a fancy, and was eventually deposed and imprisoned by his own wife. While imprisoned, he was murdered. Legend has it that the method used to kill him was a red hot poker up the bum. Gross. You know how someone's so bad at their job, but you let it go because they're such a nice person? Or somebody's a terrible person, but they're so good at their job, so you put up with it? Well, King John was both a bad king and a terrible person. Remember how awful Prince John from Robin Hood was? Well, he was even worse when he became king. He instigated an unnecessary war with France and then continued to lose battle after battle, giving up a great deal of valuable territory. To make up for this, he raised taxes and cracked down even harder on his people. Civil war broke out and he lost that battle too. But sometimes good can come from bad. He was so awful that his subjects forced him to sign the Magna Carta, one of Britain's most important and historic documents. This limited royal power and ensured the rights of feudal barons. It's hard to believe that English rulers could get much worse than that, but they do. The worst of the worst was Mary I, otherwise known as Bloody Mary. Yeah, she was the daughter of Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon, the first of Henry's six wives. She wasn't very happy with how her dad pushed her mother aside for Anne Boleyn, or how he pushed aside the Catholic Church. You know, classic stepkid stuff. So when she came to power, she was determined to bring Catholicism back to England. She revived old heresy laws and burned almost 300 people at the stake because they refused to abandon Protestantism. This was pretty shocking. Britain killed a lot of people in pretty disgusting ways, but even by medieval standards, burning at the stake was pretty extreme. Some argued that this only further ingrained the Protestant faith in England because it showed that people were willing to die for their beliefs. So, those are the most terrible people to have ever graced or disgraced the throne with their presence. As far as horrible rulers go, England really does give Westeros a run for its money. And don't even get me started on the rest of Europe. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more episodes, and let me know in the comments what monarchs you think should have made the list.
Oh, and while you're here, why don't you just go ahead and watch one of those other videos? Yeah, 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 that one's really good. Oh, yeah, that one too. Oh, I don't know, it's so many to choose from.